Yo, what's going on? How y'all doing? Sports the missions. I'm back, baby. I'm back. I just want to give a short little review of this bike, and then I'm just going to go on a little uh, peaceful ride. Uh, nothing too crazy. I'm going to go up the interstate, and uh, I'm going to take a scenic route, but I got to get there. It's about like 40 miles to get there. A lot of twists and turns through like a rural area. But before I do all of that, 1997 YZF600R, uh, Yamaha Thundercat. Uh, came out right before the R6 and um, it was reclassified from a sport bike to a sport tourer after the R6 came out. Uh, a lot of the designs and everything were taken from this bike and upgraded and transformed into an R6, shorter wheelbase, other stuff, technical stuff I don't feel like getting into. Um, I dropped it once because uh, the kickstand was in the grass and it was raining and it sunk down into the grass that fell over ever so slightly gently so I got new mirrors because the original mirrors which were car mirrors broke the um, frame slider stopped this part from uh, getting damaged the fairings and stuff like that uh, that been on there when I bought the bike very excellent bike 600 class I love the 600s because they are excellent on the highway this is like not as um, uncomfortable as a real sport bike where I'm hunched over like a cat in heat. You know what I'm saying? It's still aggressive, but the handlebars you can see are pretty high. The handlebars are pretty high. Um, I got the, uh, uh, as you can see, um, the, uh, what do you call that thing? Frame sliders on there. Uh, I got the, the flesh about light, the other light was like sticking out like here, like little miniature wings. I got the integrated turn signal with a blinker and the turn signal is the same thing. Um, here's my little GPS system because the ram mount um, doesn't work for this particular bike because of the design. The, the, I, my mechanic said the bearings in there or whatever, uh, some junk or whatever. I don't know. Anyway, hold on, let me turn this off. Uh, so this is my ram mount. What I'm going to do, I have an aftermarket windshield waiting for me. Um, it's a bit taller. The touring windshield is all blacked out. I'm going to crazy glue a, a car phone thing here, a car phone holder here, probably a ram mount one, and then use that. That's what the plan is. So this is temporary, and you know it's working for right now. Um, yeah, this is going to go. It's already waiting for me. I just ain't get a chance to get up there to the mechanic and install it because it got shipped to the mechanic. I got LED lights put on here. These lights is bright as hell even in the daytime and they just swapped the bulb. Um, this exhaust came with the Two Brothers exhaust. It's not as loud as I want it. It seems to be getting a little louder or maybe it's just my imagination to me but it's good because on the highway, I, I'm a highway rider. I travel interstate. So I don't want it too loud where it's annoying that loud droning on the highway even though I got music and even though you know um, I got headphones, I mean earplugs as well but still I want it just a little tiny bit loud. I thought there was a baffle in there but there's no baffle in there. That's about it. She's great on gas. I got it to 165 uh, miles before the fuel light came on and I always top it off. I fill it up to the top. No fuel gauge. I just got a low fuel light. And that lets me know, hey, it's time, you know, to get some gas. Um, carbureted, that's the choke right there. I only leave the choke on for like about, like, until it starts. After it starts, it usually takes like maybe three or four, I ain't even gonna lie to y'all, three or four times before it starts. Um, especially if I have ever rode it in a while, but if it's already running and stuff like that, it'll just start right up. Like, say for instance, I just got off the bike, right? It'll start just start right up, like, just like that. Uh, I just filled it up, topped it off too. So the choke, as soon as the bike starts, I turn the choke down a little bit, see how she responds. Then after a few seconds, I see she's in the rhythm, turn it off, let it warm up for a little bit. That's the curse of not having fuel injection. Like I said, it's a 97. This was in my price range. I won, I, I grew up on, Ka I not grew up. All my bikes were Kawasaki, except for one. First bike was a Kawasaki 250 I learned on. Second bike was a sports star. I started getting to that Harley life. Third bike was a um, 636, a Ninja 636. 
And now, I went. I got scared of that bike and went back to the um, cruiser. I did I was like, you know what? No, I am a sport bike rider. Why I got scared for? And I, I went to go find another Kawasaki, but there was no Kawasaki in my price range. So I got this gem right here because blue is my favorite color. The name of my bike is Jet Blue. And that's enough talking right there. Let's hit the road. Uh, the cops are over there. I'm riding dirty because I don't have no license plates. But my plates is in my backpack because my license plate fell off. Like, I took it off just to see how it looked. And then the screws fell inside this little box right here. I suppose if I take the seat off, I could find the screws. But, you know what? I'll get to that later. But if I'm stopped, like if I come out of here and I'm stopped, I'd be like, look, it fell off. I showed them the back plate. My, my registration is legit. Insurance, full coverage. It's next to nothing. And my license plate is in my backpack right now. So I could just whip it out and be like, look, boom, that's what happened. So without further ado, let's get out of here. Let's see if we're going to get stopped on the way out of here. Let's see if Popo going to do his job or not. So, let's do it. I'll pick this back up in a little bit, y'all. We about to pick it up on the highway. We about to pick it up right here. All right, so hopefully I can get all the way to my zone where I'm trying to get to, like the twisty roads, we gotta get there. So hope I have enough battery life to get all of this footage. But right now we gotta get to the twisty roads. And we gotta do some necessary evil on the highway. I'm about to hit him with some nasty highway work right here. Word is on.
Thank you, Lord, for reminding me who I am. This is me. This is me. I don't care about naked bikes. I don't care about um, uh, uh, sportsters, <laughs> cruisers, baggers, dual sports. Even though I do want to get one because I've never experienced dual sports before. This is the perfect bike for the highway. A, 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 a sport bike, a fairy with a fairing. Now I'm sorry, I don't care if naked bikes are more popular. I don't care if adventure bikes are more popular. I don't care if they stop making inline fours. I will never, ever doubt the superiority of an inline four engine for commuting on the highway. I will never doubt it. It is the superior, in my opinion. I had a, a V twin, torquey, you know, and everything. Nice, relaxed. I had a P twin, parallel twin, in my uh, uh, Ninja 250. But the inline four, ah, superb, superb, take la foi, or however you say that. <laughs> superior in every aspect. Don't mess with me. That's all I gotta say is do not mess with me.